Well, that was certainly an interesting game. Um, welcome back, everybody, to Mets Central. This is Game Reaction 76. The New York Mets defeat the Chicago Cubs by a score of 5-2, to two, and they take two out of three from this three-game series against the Cubs, you know, a team that they are fighting for currently for the, for the last wildcard spot. So, all in all, a good series against the Cubs and a nice bounce-back win, especially against that ass-whooping that the Mets got um, yesterday where they lost 8-1. But, I mean, solid performance today from the boys. Obviously, you know, We'll get into what happened at the end of the game because it was certainly weird, but it's not going to take it's not going to take anything away from you know how the boys played tonight because they played a really good game overall, and that starts with Sevy. Sevy was on the mound uh, was on the mound today for the Mets, and he had a very good bounce back performance today. Um, take a look at a, take a look at his line: six innings, three hits, ten Ks, uh, zero walks, which is big for Sevy. Uh, lowered his season ERA down to three point two nine and. Sevy had a, you know, he was very in control. He was very in control tonight. You know, so, like I said, six strong innings. Definitely his two best pitches today were the sweeper and the fastball because he got a, he got a majority of his strikeouts on those two pitches. And and out of, out of the six six innings he pitched, three of them were one to three innings. So so he had the Cubs lineup in check for most of the game, and he kept his um his pitch count down a lot, which is which is big for Sevy as well because he does he does rack up his pitch count a lot. But really, his toughest inning was his last inning, which was the um the sixth inning where you know he got he was able to get Amaya and Michael Bush out on a on a ground out and a strikeout. He hit um Horner, so he was at first base, and then he had a long at bat with Cody Bellinger, and Bellinger just kept fouling pitch after pitch after pitch after pitch. It was a twelve pitch hit. It was a twelve pitch at bat, but Fortunately enough, Sevy dug deep, and um, he was able to. I think he got him to strike out on the fastball, so it was a big out right there for Sevy. And then he was able to, to get out of that sixth inning front with um, he he got Seiya Suzuki to pop up to um to center field where Bader caught the ball. So all in all, very solid uh, bounce back performance from Sevy tonight. And the Mets offense <clears throat> uh, played very well, played very well again. You know, nothing nothing going on in the first inning from them. You know, apart from a J.D. Martinez double, that didn't lead to anything. Uh, the second inning, you had a Francisco uh, Alvarez double, that didn't lead that didn't lead to anything either. But the third is where the the, uh, the bat's starting to get going. So McNeil, by the way, Jeff McNeil, I'm sorry, dude. You, the Mets got to do something about him because he is just a net negative right now all around. I know his defense hasn't been terrible, but. His bat and his fall off from you know where he was in 2019, 2020, 2022. It's just he is he's fallen off so much, and the Mets definitely got to look to move him at the trade deadline. Well, you know they'll probably have to eat money on him, but he can't be on this team anymore. So McNeil, uh, he lined out to Cody Bellinger, Harrison Bader. Then big game today. Uh, big game today. He multi. Uh, I think he had two doubles today, and then Lindor. Who has been playing well recently? Uh, he he hit a home run, made it two nothing, and then back to back, Brandon Nimmo after Francisco um, Lindor hit another home run, which made it three nothing. Nothing going on from the Mets in the fourth inning. They went down one two three. Uh, fifth inning, Mets would get a Mets would get the bases loaded. They wouldn't do much. They would get they would be able to score one run though. JD Martinez he grounded out softly to um, Michael Bush, um, but they were able to get a run across. Sixth inning, nothing from the Mets either. You know, move on to the seventh. Uh, had a couple guys on base, weren't able to capitalize on anything either. Fortunately, though, eighth inning comes around. Uh, Mark Vientos with a big home run made it 5 2. And by the way, Mark Vientos had a very impressive season so far because I don't listen, he, he was definitely disappointed when you know he had a solid spring training and he didn't make and he didn't make the team had to go down triple A. Was definitely disappointed about that, but. Ever since he's gotten the call up, he's taken full advantage of it because he's just been hitting. He's been hitting balls hard, and he's had a lot of big at bats for this team. So, you know, it's it's a shame to see you know, like from the last two years, you know how Buck was treating him and not playing him at all because the kid's got something, and you know he's now finally with consistent playing time, he's finally you know beginning to flourish and showing, you know, his true talent. But that be. That would be it from the Mets uh, from the offensive side. After after Sevy um, after Sevy would come out, Nunez would come in to pitch the seventh inning. He'd give up a hit and then he'd give up um, give up a, a two run home run. That would make it that would make it four to two at that time. 
Then after Nunes, you had Reed Garrett pitch the eighth inning. Uh, clean, clean inning from him. He would just let up the the one hit. Uh, Reed Garrett continuing on his really good season. And then we come to the bottom of the ninth. Mets up 5-2, looking like Edwin Diaz is going to come in, you know, finish the game off. And he's he's looked much better, you know, ever since coming back off the IL. Unfortunately, though, we come back from commercial break, and it we found out that Edwin Diaz got thrown out of the game because of st- sticky stuff on his hand. And, look, um, it's tough to see because, like I said before, Diaz has looked much better ever since coming back from his injury. But, look, if you're going to have sticky stuff on your hand, then, then listen, it's, it, it's the rules. And if you break the rules, you're going to get suspended. So this is just going to be like what we saw with Max Scherzer last year against the Dodgers where he had sticky stuff and, you know, he got suspended for 10 games. So it's it's definitely going to be a tough loss not having Diaz for 10 games now. But, listen, the Mets just got to find a way now to get through it. But so Diaz would be ejected. Drew Smith would come in. He'd get two outs. Uh, would give up. Uh, would give up one hit. Then Jake Deep, Jake Deakman would come in to finish the game. He had a three pitch at bat, and he'd close out. And the Mets would finish this game off and win five two. So yeah, look, I know the Diaz, like the Diaz thing sucks. It sucks to lose them, like I said before. But you know now they got to find a way for the next ten games. You know. To get you know to close out games without him, you know Reed Garrett's been pitching well, so I I expect him to be the closer, and he was the closer when um when Diaz was struggling and and when he was on the IL. So so yeah, listen, they're in a tough spot now, but they've been winning games now, so they just got to keep finding ways to do it. So they moved to thirty seven and thirty nine, still a game back of the wild card and. Yeah, now they head back to New York and they play the Yankees in a two games, uh, two game set in the Subway Series at City Field. So let's see how they fare. They got to keep listen. They got to keep this hot streak going and just keep keep on with that playoff push. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, see you next time.